Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Friends, welcome to this uh, learning about uh, sociology and uh, here we try to address upon a very sensitive issue uh, which pertains to Indian sociology. I think uh, when we try to speak about the Indian society, uh, many things comes in our mind like we try to speak about uh, the caste, we try to speak about the village, we try to speak about the Hinduism or we try to speak about the republics. So, I think uh, when we try to speak about certain items, I think Indian society has its own uniqueness and this course which we are trying to deal which is basically introductory rural sociology, continuity and change. I think uh, when we try to speak about this, introductory rural sociology, continuities and change. Uh, this course basically deals with different ways in which we try to understand what is the rural sociology and also we try to see that how we try to see the emergence of rural sociology in terms of the world framework and also how it has taken a shape in the Indian society. And uh, in that context, I think uh, the understanding of the emergence of rural sociology becomes an important issue. Now the point of course is when we try to speak about that how rural sociology has come into prominence and there may be many things which may come in our mind that rural sociology it started uh, where or how it has taken its uh, trajectory. And for your surprise I would like to mention that rural sociology it has its origin in United States. So, the subject, the theme which of course has a take from the developed nation I think matters a lot and there may be many queries in your mind that why rural sociology has emerged in the United States. But before that let us try to understand that how we try to see rural sociology. I think rural sociology basically we try to see it as a specialized discipline which tries to understand the rural in a specific way. And this rural basically can include various aspects either it is the question of social interaction, the institutions and the activities along with the social changes which are taking place in the rural society. All of them comes into the domain of the understanding about the rural sociology. And in that way whatsoever we try to study in the rural environment become part and parcel about the rural sociology. So, when we try to see that how rural can be seen as a unique entity, we have to see it in terms of the progress, we have to see it in terms of the prosperity and we also have to see it in terms of the various challenges which are coming up. And in that context, when we try to speak about the understanding of the rural sociology, as I mentioned earlier also that it has its uh, origin basically in the United States. And here I think uh, we have to have one thing very much clear in our mind that when we try to speak about the rural sociology in United States, it does not mean that the United States has the predominance of the rural society. Because we try to see it in a different framework, especially we try to also have a distinction between how the rural society and the urban society are to be seen distinctively. Now, when we say rural, I think uh, what makes something to be rural that becomes more significant. Like when we try to speak about the rural, the things which may come up in your mind are that what is rural? It may incorporate maybe the question of a specific landscape or we try to see rural in terms of talking about the agrarian. We may also try to see the rural in terms of 
the specific land use and also we try to see that rural may speak about certain amount of homogeneity. And beyond that if you try to see in terms of certain other elements we try to speak about the specific form of social stratification which is part and parcel of the rural society. We also try to see rural in terms of the specific population in terms of specific population and also we try to see that what becomes rural is something which has been defined by the state to be the rural. So, I think these are the different ways in which we try to see that how rural can be undertaken with regard to the understanding about the specific society. And I think uh, if you try to see these parameters in which the rural can be seen, I think the most appropriate which suits the understanding about the rural is that a society which is marked by the presence of the agrarian economy. So, the agrarian economy which we say that majority of the people, the majority population are basically involved in the agriculture and the ag allied activities that makes something to be rural. So, that is how we try to see that what is not there in urban definitely is that agriculture is not the main primary occupation, but in the rural the primary occupation is basically the agriculture and the allied activities. So, the rural has to be seen in terms of the people, the majority of the population which are basically practicing the agriculture is something which makes something to be rural. And here I think uh, apart from trying to speak about that the rural has its own uniqueness, we also try to see what has happened in the United States and how it has gone into a specific specialized discipline because we try to see that rural sociology is something which will be seen not simply as a study about the rural society, it is also seen as a group of specialists, a group of sociologists who are basically inclined towards understanding the origin, the development and the changes which took place in the rural society. And here I think uh, we can say that when we try to speak about how the rural has come in the United States. So, one thing that becomes important is that we try to see that the period which is marked from 1890 to 1920 in the United States was the landmark period in which we try to see the emergence of sociology as a discipline. And here the important thing is that rural sociology which we try to see in terms of a specific understanding, we basically try to see that United States has the understanding about the rural from 1820 onwards. But was that the period in which we can say that rural sociology has got its establishment? So, I think the straight answer will be no, because in different sectors or in the different parts, we try to see that the rural sociology has been understood and has been undertaken by various scholars. It may include the contribution by Charles Anderson. Charles Anderson who has been considered to be one of an important pillar in the Chicago school at Chicago University. Then we also try to see the contribution of Butterfields who also has contributed towards the understanding about the rural sociology and he was also he was belonging to the Michigan University, but he also has seen the understanding about the rural sociology not as a specialist, but trying to study the rural society. Then we also have certain other people which may include John Morris Gillen, whose contribution appears to be significant basically with regard to the development of sociology and that to the rural society. But significantly we find the contribution of M. H. Giddings. M. H. Giddings whose contribution we try to see in the Columbia University and his contribution is uh, considered to be responsible for the emergence of rural sociology in a specific way. Now, these are the people who were the not the pioneers, but to some extent they had tried to invent upon the development of rural sociology and we try to see the Thomas Carver's work, 
which was equally significant in terms of understanding the rural sociology. But these contributions could not make rural sociology as a specialized discipline. The reason being that these studies or these uh, scholars tries to see the rural society in a very specific fashion. And in that context, if you try to see, we try to find out that in terms of a specific discipline, we did not find the location of rural sociology. Then what makes rural sociology to be significant or how and who has basically led to the contribution of rural sociology as a discipline. And here I think uh, one important uh, uh, landmark which we try to see is the period which is marked by 1907. Uh, so, it was 1907 which marked the emergence of rural sociology in a very specific way and that was by whom it was not by the uh, what you can say the academicians, it was not by the philosopher rather it was basically an attempt by the president of the United States that is T. S. Roosevelt. So, it was basically the contribution of the president uh, T. S. Roosevelt who had initiated the development of rural sociology to some extent. And in 1907, when he had announced the formation of the Country Life Commission, Country Life Commission. I think uh, this Country Life Commission was basically seen as a landmark institution which tries to understand the rural society and also try to see the development which took place in the rural society. So, basically we try to find out that the different things which have been floated or worked out by the previous scholars could not give a right direction to the rural sociology. But the contribution of President uh, T. S. Roosevelt uh, who tried to build up the rural sociology as a specialized discipline in terms of the holistic development of the American society was seen as an important issue. And that way if you try to see, we try to find out that the Country Life Commission was basically seen as the Magna Carta. Magna Carta with regard to the development of rural sociology as a specialized discipline. Now, when we say this uh, contribution of uh, Country Life Commission, what it has done? The basic purpose of the Country Life Commission was that it tries to understand the rural setting, the countryside. Normally, when we try to speak about the uh, western view, uh, we normally try to associate rural with the countryside. So, the countryside basically represents what is the rural and the important thing is in 1907 when T. S. Roosevelt tried to invent upon the Country Life Commission, he basically was trying to speak about that he was being impressed by the rural life in Ireland. Rural life in Ireland basically the contribution of Thomas Plunkett. Thomas Plunkett who was basically played significant role in the development of the rural society. So, the similar thing was been uh, posed upon by T. S. Roosevelt who tries to build upon the United States in terms of the rural society, in terms of the rural development. But the important thing is that when he tried to invent upon the Country Life Commission, he tried to associate many other things which took place in the different parts of the country. And here we try to find out that this commission uh, that is the Country Life Commission, it has submitted his uh, report and that report basically lead to the formation of an important issue that is rural analysis was seen as an important site for the development of the nation. And here this rural life which was seen as an important contribution and later on we try to see that it was J. M. Gillette who had published a significant book on rural society and that was one of the landmark book which has came in 1916. So, I think in 1907 the Country Life Commission was formed and then we tried to find out that G. M. Gillette has come out with a contribution that is the rural society. So, I think uh, people started working upon researching upon the rural society in a specific way and similarly we tried to find out that gradually the academic growth of the, dis of the discipline of the rural sociology had started. Basically, we have one significant contribution by Professor Giddings 
by Professor Franklin Giddings who was seen as an important figure and he had uh, basically posed upon the dissertation the, at the Columbia University, the doctoral dissertation on rural sociology which was seen as one of the significant uh, uh, issue with regard to the development of sociology, rural sociology as a discipline. And also we try to see that another significant person whom we can rate to be significant for the development of rural sociology in United States is Charles Galpin. Charles Galpin whose contribution again we try to see was to be seen in terms of the Bureau of Agriculture Economics and also he was been appointed at the University of Wisconsin, University of Wisconsin for the development of the agriculture society and this agricultural economics and the agricultural society was one of an important uh, uh, department which tries to explore upon the different aspects of the rural society. Now when we try to move ahead, uh, we try to see that the rural population which we try to speak about or the changing rural life, it was to be studied in a specific fashion and here the important thing that comes into the picture of course is that we need to have certain rural sociological researches. And these rural sociological researches are going to be significant for making the uh, soci rural sociology as a specific discipline. And here we try to find out that when we had the significant contribution by group of people, especially we try to refer it as a systematic, a systematic source book, a systematic source book on rural sociology. And this work is basically by a group of peoples which came in 1930 and the significant people included Sorokin, then we have Zimmerman, we have Sorokin, we have Zimmerman and also we have Charles J. Galpin. So I think uh, this contribution that is the systematic source book on rural sociology was the landmark contribution in the field of rural sociology which was basically seen as the insights for many. And later on we try to see that the formation of a specific society that is the rural sociological society came into existence, rural sociological society came into existence and this rural sociological society was basically seen as an organization, as a society which is basically meant for doing researches in American society in, uh, in the rural areas. And this rural sociological society has come out with a magazine which is titled as Rural Sociology. So this magazine, Rural Sociology which we try to see, it came into existence in 1936. And in 1936, we try to see that gradually the contribution which has been reflected in the rural sociology and rural sociological society which has got in prominence in 1937, I think this has basically led to the academic growth of rural sociology as a discipline. So we had plenty of experiments, we have plenty of measures which has been taken up by various scholars and they try to analyze, understand, interpret rural sociology in the different framework. But the important thing is that in order to get a specific shape in terms of an academic contribution, we try to see that when the rural sociological society was established and also along with that we have a significant publication in the form of the rural sociology that is a magazine. But it will be uh, news for you that this rural sociology was basically seen as a official journal of the rural sociology in the later phase. So how the initial attempts has gradually led to the emergence of the specific journal or the specific group of scholars or in terms of a specific uh, contribution in terms of work or the researches has basically led to the emergence of rural sociology as a discipline. So we try to see that at one end we had the so called administrative appeal or the administrative purpose was involved that is the contribution which we try to see by T.S. Roosevelt who basically tried to build upon the 
specific discipline which can study and deal with the problems and the prospects of the rural society that is the countryside. So, that was an administrative appeal that is the there was a political will to improve upon the conditionality of the countryside. But that was not suffice to bring about the transformation in the countryside. So, gradually it has been taken a shift with the understanding and analysis by the reputed scholars, the academicians who basically try to build up it as a systematic discipline. And why that is important? That is important because if we have that, then only we try to see that we can have the systematic understanding and analysis of the rural sociology. So, I think uh, these attempts has basically led to the emergence of rural sociology at certain period of time. But later on when we try to move further, we try to find out that there are certain other important things that how it has taken its shapes in the world framework because these were the issues which were restricted to the United States. But how we try to see that it has taken its shape in the later phase. But parallelly if you try to see in United States what has happened of course is that there was a federal government of US federal government of United States which has provided the fund also. So, it is not simply the government efforts, it is not simply the systematic studies, but also required to have certain funds and these funds are basically through the agricultural experiment stations and these funds are basically being part of the agricultural experiment stations. And these agri agriculture experiment stations were basically seen as uh, playing a significant role and these funds were basically an outcome of the 1887 legislation which is called in a popular way the Hatch Act. So, the 1887 Hatch Act has the provision of providing the funds that is through the agriculture experiment station and that has been sponsored by the United States government. And also we have another significant act that is the US Purnell Act. US Purnell Act which we try to see has been implemented in 1925. So, US Purnell Act of 1925 also played a significant role in providing the research fund, research fund to the scholars and to the academicians working in the field of agrarian economics or the agrarian economics or what one can say the home science, the home economics which basically deals with the contribution and production in the field of the countryside. So, these were significant contribution in terms of the sponsored projects, the fundraisings which have been done. Now, if you try to see I think we try to see the structuring of uh, the rural sociology in terms of the academic will, uh, in terms of the governmental will that is the political will, in terms of the academic scholarship by the different contributors individually, collectively and then gradually we try to see that we try to move ahead in terms of providing funds, funds in the field of research is so that the scholars and the scholarship will be uh, generated and through that the multiple contribution can be seen in the field of the countryside. So, this is basically the growth of rural sociology which took place in the United States at the initial phase, but how it has taken a bigger shape in terms of its spread effect at the wider society. And for that I think uh, we try to see that uh, the shift which took place across the world, basically we are trying to hint upon the second world war. So, second world war was basically seen as an important turning point for the growth of the academic disciplines because at that period of time we tried to find out that the European power was gradually shifting and the U United States has tried to hegemonize or try to have a better control on the rest of the world. So, this is basically one important aspect in which we try to see that the second world war onwards we try to see that there was a drastic shift which took place in terms of the transfer of the knowledge and here I think for understanding the human civilization 
or for understanding the so called reconstruction of the countryside or the social life, there was a requirement of a specific discipline which can deal with the understanding about the countryside. And here, who were seen as the specialist? It was the United States. So, the United States has tried to build upon its uh, specialization and it also tries to extend the frontiers beyond the boundaries of United States and it has reached to the Europe and also to the other part of the East. So, we try to see that United States was trying to have its expertise first in the field of countryside as a specialist. Now, their knowledge is going to be transferred to the Europe and the East and that is how we try to see that these shifts took place, especially we try to see the uh, so called uh, point 0.4 programs which was seen as one of the significant program for the development of the countryside and these point programs uh, which has been invented and has been carried forward by the United States, they were basically responsible for the understanding as well as the implementation of the various rural policies uh, for the development of the countryside in the part of the world. And here, if we try to see, we try to find out that United States was basically acting as an important player, which was basically trying to understand not only the rest of the world or trying to help rest of the world, but they were also trying to make certain changes and also try to have certain amount of hegemony with regard to the understanding of the rural society. So, that way if you try to see, we try to find out that the United States was seen as the biggest partner with the rest of the world in terms of transforming their wisdom, their knowledge to rest of the world. And we try to see that the so called East which was basically in the phase of the developing or the underdeveloped situation, it has started uh, following the intellectuals or the intelligentsia of the United States. But the important thing is that what makes the other countries to follow the United States, especially like I said that the point 0.4 program was one of the serious uh, program which was basically designed to carry forward the development in the countryside. But what is more important is that these programs were trying to understand not only the rest of the world, but also trying to carry forward certain skills or maybe certain specialist as a package to the rest of the world. So, I think uh, we try to see that uh, it was not simply the transfer of skills and specialist but we also try to see that certain amount of hegemonization was also been carried forward by United States through these programs. Just for your kind information, if you try to see that uh, we had the first development program that is the community development program, it was having its inspiration from the United States. So, we try to see that uh, many of the things which we had taken as a startup are being the what you can say far sighted or the consequences of or the carrying forward of the United States policies in the rest of the world. And that is how we try to see that certain amount of hegemonization of the knowledge of the potency has been started by the country in a specific framework. Now, here we try to see that once the United States has established its hegemony, we try to see how we can locate the development of rural sociology in United States and then coming down to the second framework that is our own country, the Indian society. So, we try to see that what made the understanding about the development of rural sociology in India. And here, if you try to see, we try to find out that we had many things which has contributed towards the development of the rural sociology in Indian society. I think uh, first thing or the first major reason which led to the establishment of rural sociology as a discipline will be that majority of the population in India was into the agriculture. Normally, we try to say that more than 70 percent of the population is engaged in agriculture. So, in order to have the upliftment of the rural society for the reconstruction of the rural society and also for the better administration of the rural society, we try to have the discipline which can cater to the needs of the countryside of the Indian society.
And here we try to see that rural sociology was seen as an important branch which can have the better understanding about the rural sociology, uh, the rural society in a specific way. But when we try to see in terms of its emergence or its origin, we normally try to say that it was basically in the 19th century that we try to see that the rural sociology has grounded in India. The rural sociology has grounded in India and we had the prominent scholars who try to contribute or try to understand the rural society in their own way. I think uh, certain names that needs uh, significance especially is the contribution by Sir Henry Mene. Sir Henry Mene's contribution uh, basically we have the uh, two significant contribution one is ancient law and another is ancient society. So, these two works were uh, seen as the landmark work in the field of rural sociology which has basically tried to understand the rural society in a specific way. We also have the contribution by Charles Metcalf, whose contribution is again going to be significant with regard to the rural sociology. We have Thomas Munro, Thomas Munro another significant contribution we have Baden Powell. And also we try to see the contribution of Slater. I think all these people, the scholars, although they were not the thorough academicians, but their contribution had been quite significant for understanding the rural society. And here if you try to see in a very clear cut way, most of these scholars they wanted to understand the rural society in terms of the specific framework. Like when we try to speak about the contribution of Henry Mary in terms of ancient law and ancient society, he was trying to devise or he was trying to have the mapping of the various practices which are been there in the rural. Especially we try to speak about the customary laws, we try to speak about the land tenure system or we try to speak about the contribution in terms of the kinship network. So, I think these are the things which are required to be understood in order to have a better understanding about the countryside. Similarly, we had many surveys, economic surveys have been there, especially this latter's contribution in terms of econo economic survey has been quite significant for understanding the rural society. But beyond that, if you try to see uh, the economic surveys which were again beneficial for understanding the rural society, but more than that, what is more significant is that these practices or these things which have been done, either they were been done for a specific purpose which we can say in a more jacketed way that is it was having an administrative purpose for analyzing and interpreting the rural society. And most of the scholar to a greater extent they have followed the ethnographic technique, ethnographic technique for understanding and analyzing the Indian society especially the rural society. But these contributions could not bring the systematic knowledge about looking to the rural society. So, we tried to find out that later on we had certain other systematic growth which took place in the rural India and that has been carried forward basically after the first constitution, the formation of the constitution of India. Later on we tried to find out that we had systematic implementation of the CDP that is the community development program. So, the community development program was seen as an important project for bringing about the transformation and development of the rural society. The CDP program which has been inspired by the 4-H club of the United States and more than that the CDP program was seen as the uh, with a specific motto was the self-help and mutual help. So, self-help and the mutual help was the basic motto of the community development program and this community development program which was been initiated in 1952 has made a significant change uh, in terms of the development of the rural India. But again one thing which we have to be which we have to humbly accept and admit is that although this was seen as one of the first de rural development program in India, it could not bring a drastic change in the rural society because of certain limitation 
SC Dubey has basically tried to pinpoint uh, the analysis of the community development program and uh, many other scholars try to see that community development program was to a greater extent a failure and the reason for that being the question of the interventions of the bureaucracy, the lack of trust between the masses and the government and also the amount of decent decentralization which could not take place. So, I think these are the reasons which has led to the partial failure of the community development program in India. But the CDP was gradually been followed by uh, the new program which was basically seen as the policy matter to overcome the faults and lacunas of the CDP and I think uh, the popular name which you try to see is the Panchayati Raj. So, basically we try to see that Panchayati Raj was basically seen as a review based critical analysis of the CDP which tries to overcome the faults and the lacunas which have been there in the community development program. So, we try to see that uh, the failure of one program has led to the emergence of another program which of course is successfully running in the different parts of the country. But beyond that if you try to see, uh, we try to find out that the contribution of significant uh, people, the scholarship if you try to see that becomes important because when we try to speak about the rural sociology or we try to speak about the contribution by the academician, then only we can say that there is a significant growth of the discipline. And here I think uh, if you try to see there are multiple names which needs a special attention especially when we try to speak about the contribution in the area of rural uh, society in terms of the specialization. The significant name includes Professor S. E. Dubey, S. E. Dubey who had been uh, contributing in the field of uh, rural society and the significant work is Indian village and later on he was speaking about India's changing village. So, S. E. Dubey has tried to invent upon the Indian village in 1955 and also we try to see India's changing village which was seen as an important contribution which came in 1958. So, that these were the two significant work which has tried to give some edge towards the understanding of the rural society in a systematic way. Then another name that deserves special attention and you may be familiar with that is the contribution of Professor M. N. Srinivas. M. N. Srinivas famous work that is India's villages and this famous work M. N. Srinivas famous work India's villages that came out in 1961 was an edited work which tried to incorporate the different uh, what you can say studies, uh, he tried to uh, have the package of the various studies which has been contributed in the rural society. We also try to see that uh, other significant contribution can be seen in terms of the contribution by Professor D. N. Majumdar and D. N. Majumdar's uh, famous work which we try to see it basically is the rural profile which came in 1955 and also we try to see uh, another significant work that is caste and communication, caste and communication in an Indian village is another significant work of uh, D. N. Majumdar which had came in 1958. So, this is another significant contribution in the field of rural sociology which was seen as a landmark work and then if we have other scholars, I think uh, Mackim Marriott's contribution, Mackim Marriott's contribution is considered to be significant be because it tries to understand the uh, Indian society in a very uh, specific way and the contribution was village India. And this village India basically it came into existence in 1961 and uh, then if we have other scholars in that field, we basically try to see the contribution of F. G. Bailey. F. G. Bailey's contribution which we try to see in terms of caste and the economic frontiers. Caste and the economic frontiers that is a significant work in the field of rural sociology which came in 1957 and also uh, we have other scholars like 
professor oscar lewis oscar lewis uh, who tried to see the specific framework of the rural society and the work of course is village life in northern india village life in northern india and this was the work which came in 1958 and uh, beyond that i think uh, one name that deserves the specific uh, importance is the contribution by professor a r desai and his significant contribution that is rural sociology in india which was seen as a landmark contribution in the field of rural sociology and uh, this was the work which tries to put the rural uh, sociology in a ve very specialized way because it tries to incorporate multiple dimensions of the rural society and it was having a contribution from the most reputed scholars in the field of rural sociology in general and sociology in particular here if you try to see the contribution of these scholars i think one thing that uh, becomes more significant is that most of these works were been seen as coming especially in 1950s and in that way we try to see that 1950s was the era which has shown the significant changes uh, or it has one can say that there is mushrooming of or the flooding of the studies on the rural society which took place in the uh, uh, rural india and this was the era which also marked by the significant contribution in the field of village studies so i think uh, we try to see that the rural sociology and the village studies having its relationship in terms of the era which is 1950s was the era where we have the significant contribution on the indian villages and most of the work which we have just mentioned they try to reflect upon these contribution in their own way now when we try to move ahead i think uh, one thing that will uh, make you more uh, pleasing or maybe more attracting will be that how we try to understand rural sociology and if we have that understanding i think uh, basically we try to see it in terms of the specific definitions because if we have the specific definitions that how we try to see rural sociology then it becomes more powerful to tool for understanding and analyzing the rural society and here i think few name that deserves attention is the contribution of sanderson so sanderson how he try to define rural sociology he try to see that what rural sociology is rural sociology is the sociology of rural life it is the sociology of the rural life in the rural environment so basically we try to see that what rural sociology does it basically tries to understand the rural life in the rural environment that is the simplest way in which we try to see what rural sociology is then we have the significant and the most systematic definition that came from ar desai and how ar desai tries to understand what rural sociology is what he says is that rural sociology is the science of the rural society it is the science of the rural society now this is first part that what it is it is basically the science of rural society then he extend further that the laws of the structure and development the laws of the structure and development the laws of structure and development of the rural society in general and as the discovering of discovering of the new laws or we try to see that what it does it basically tries to see discovering of the new laws which can be seen as the special laws discovering of the special laws which will be helpful in governing the particular society which will be helpful in governing the particular society that is what we say is the rural society and apart from that we also try to see that it is basically the sociology is seen as the science 
which incorporates the laws of development of rural societies laws of development of rural society in terms of its reconstruction in, in terms of its uh, understanding in terms of its development so he was trying to see not only rural sociology as a systematic discipline in terms of a specific science but also how it can contribute towards the development or governance of the rural society that was the way in which he tries to see then another significant name uh, which deserves attention is the contribution by T. L. Smith and how T. L. Smith tries to understand rural sociology that he tries to say that we try to see the investigation rather the social investigations, social investigations of the programs of the phenomenon that are present only or confined to the rural environment. So, investigation in the rural environment I think uh, what Sanderson has said to some extent and beyond that what has been talked about is persons engaged in the agricultural occupation. So, I think uh, uh, focusing upon the people who are basically into the agricultural practices, agriculture as an occupation. So, it basically tries to investigate upon the rural environment in that particular sense. Then we have the contribution by F. Stuart Chapin. F. Stuart Chapin who tries to see rural sociology in a very specific way and how Stuart Chapin tries to understand rural sociology is that the sociology of rural life, it is what? The sociology of rural life, it is the study of the rural population. So, focusing upon the rural population alone and also rural social organizations and also he tries to say that it incorporates the social processes, the rural social processes. So, all these things are going to be part and parcel of the definition of the rural sociology which has been talked about by uh, F. Stuart Chapin and that has to be seen in terms of the comparative framework. So, we try to see another uh, perspective for how or how we try to define the rural sociology. Then we have the contribution by Lovie Nelson. Lovie Nelson's contribution, if you try to see Lovie Nelson's contribution, basically it tries to be seen in terms of the subject matter of rural sociology and what has been talked about is that uh, anything which exists in the rural environment, is what the rural sociology does. So, it basically try to speak about the subject matter of subject matter of the rural environment and that is basically the scope of rural sociology also. And in that way we try to see that uh, we have the different understanding one name which again deserves a special attention uh, in terms of understanding is we try to speak about the contribution of Bertrand who tries to understand rural sociology in terms of looking for the study of human relationship, study of human relationship. Human relationships are to be studied in the rural environment. So, if we have that we are basically speaking about the rural sociology. So, I think uh, these are the different ways in which we try to understand and interpret the emergence of uh, rural sociology in its uh, specific uh, meaning in terms of a specific way in which we can understand what rural sociology is and does and that is how we try to see that it has certain amount of uh, understanding which is trying to be seen as uh, uh, looking for the systematic analysis and research in the field of rural sociology. But uh, as has been pointed out by A.R. Desai that uh, rural sociology is not simply a specialized discipline, but what it does is it basically tries to bring about certain amount of scientificness to the analysis of the rural society. And here the important thing is that we try to see that what rural sociology does, it basically tries to bring about the objectivity. So, we try to see that rural sociology in terms of its nature we try to find out that 
the rural sociology has certain amount of objectivity because it involves certain amount of science with regard to the analysis and understanding of a specific phenomenon. It is not everything which can come into the domain of rural sociology. It has a specialized way of looking to the things. So, objectivity is definitely one important uh, parameter for making something to be science and it is basically the rural sociology in terms of its nature having that appeal. Then another thing uh, which again requires importance is the question of generality. So, generality also is making it more homogeneous across the society, across the field in that sense as such. So, generality definitely is another significant thing uh, which we try to see in terms of its nature and which is part of the rural sociology. Then it is the question of variability. So, it is verifiable, it can be tested, it can be analyzed in that sense as such. So, verifiability is another uh, crucial character of the nature of the rural sociology. Then it is also having the issue of rationality, rationality meaning thereby that uh, whatsoever we are putting is in terms of a specific logic, it is not something which is random, it is something which is coming out in terms of a specific reason uh, which has been supported by some evidences. And also I think uh, which normally is not been done by sociology in general, but uh, to some extent uh, in order to have uh, uh, the rural sociology I think what is required is that we also believe on that this particular thing can even lead to the predictability. Uh, in a sense that uh, when we try to formulate the laws, it should be based on certain predictions on the basis of which we try to see that how we can see it as a principle of the rural development. And then we try to see that how we can see them in terms of a specific system uh, because when we have the assemblage and the systematic analysis, we try to build up the system in which we can have the sophisticated uh, literature, the sophisticated presentation of uh, putting the rural sociology as a discipline. So, I think uh, all these things basically it does what? It basically tries to bring about the use of the scientific method and also it tries to incorporate the factual studies, factual study. I think uh, this is uh, more important because when we try to speak about the factual study, it gives strength to the discipline that gives strength to the specific uh, uh, understanding. And uh, what is more important is that if these facts are to be seen in terms of the cause effect relation, that is the understanding of the cause and what are the effects, if you try to understand those things, then it can be seen as more scientific. And more than that, I think uh, when we have these cause effect relationship, sometimes it is or they may lead to certain amount of prediction in that sense as such. Although we do not try to believe uh, totally on that as such because uh, the cause effect relationships are there, but it may always amount to the predictions is a bigger question. And that is what uh, sometimes we try to see that uh, the so called sociology in general, it lacks that scientific temper because the predictions cannot be made on the basis of the cause effect relationship. So, we try to see that whatsoever has been talked about by the various scholars in terms of rural sociology is basically trying to focus upon the specific way in which we try to understand and interpret the rural sociology. And when we try to see that what can be the possible scope or how or to what extent the rural sociology can have its uh, domain. I think uh, if you try to see in that context, we try to find out that anything and uh, everything can be uh, which is in and around the rural environment can be part and parcel of, of the scope of rural sociology. And in that way, we try to see that it is not simply the question of the rural people, but also the rural institutions or we try to speak about the rural religion, rural environment. stratification, then the ecology <coughs> or we try to see the various practices that is the social processes. All these things is, are 
uh, going to be part and parcel for the understanding and analysis of the uh, uh, rural sociology. And this scope makes it more appealing because if you try to see that our majority of the population is engaged in agriculture and the allied activities. And if you try to move further that if you try to have the development and the transformation of the rural society definitely it is going to be more fruitful with regard to the understanding and analysis of not only the rural economy, but also the development of the nation Indian nation in general. But how these things are going to be more practical, I think uh, what is needed is that we need to have very systematic understanding and analysis of the rural society. And that will come uh, by if you try to see that how we can generate that in terms of uh, uh, its uh, discipline as a specialized discipline, we try to see that uh, what has been done by our predecessors, either it is the contribution of uh, uh, Mackim Marriott, S. E. Dubey, M. N. Srinivas, or we try to speak about the contribution of Oscar Lewis, D. N. Majumdar, or we try to speak about other scholars. We try to find out that these scholars had try to have the holistic way of looking to the villages. And now, since we are moving towards the complex society, and uh, that way if we try to see the village is not seen as an isolated whole, rather we try to see now we are having an era in which the rural urban connectivity is very much, we try to see the linkage between the rural and the urban, it has in, uh, we try to call now the global villages. So, that way we try to see the drastic changes are coming up in the rural society. So, then what is needed? Uh, we have to have uh, maybe the parcel or the package studies, uh, the focus studies, because now even the shift also is taking place, uh, especially in the field of uh, uh, the specific perspective, like we are moving from the structural functional to the ethnographic or we are moving towards the case studies or we are moving towards the ethnomethodology or phenomenology. So, it is from macro to the micro the shift has taken place. So, similarly, we try to now focus upon the smaller units, the smaller issues which can be more meaningful in the understanding and analysis of the rural society. So, what is required in that sense of course, is now we have to uh, uh, see the changes, we have to see the implications of the various strategies and the programs which are designed for bringing about the change in the rural society. And for that, I think uh, there are many organizations the state sponsored organizations which are working uh, in the field of uh, uh, sociology in general and for rural sociology in particular. I think uh, if we try to speak about the contribution of UGC or we try to see the contribution of ICSSR, we try to find out that they had the uh, project funding on the specific themes, on the specific areas and uh, ICSR basically tries to uh, not only uh, fund the projects, but it also tries to come out with the uh, what you can say the specific uh, volume uh, which basically deals with the trend report and uh, the ICSR uh, trend report on sociology and social anthropology. It tries to uh, put the trajectory of uh, the last 10 years of uh, uh, what you can say the researches and the studies uh, which has been done on the space, specialized area. So, even on the rural sociology what has been the pertinent uh, issues what are the different ways in which the rural society has been uh, looked upon and how and what are the changes which have taken place. So, in order to understand those things, uh, uh, we had the specific uh, contribution from ICSR uh, which is more authenticated. Even the so called uh, monograph surveys which were focused upon the uh, villages, especially we try to speak about the uh, village monograph which were there in 1961. Uh, which tries to study the different uh, parts of the uh, country, especially uh, we had uh, specific uh, uh, village studies focusing upon the different aspect. So, I think uh, there are significant contributions which have been done which tries to put uh, the village studies in a very focused way. And it is not only the question of village studies, rather we try to see that uh, the analysis of the various programs are also there. I think uh, when the time will come, we will try to speak about these issues, especially when we have the understanding about the theoretical and the methodological issues dealing with the village studies. So, I think uh, these are certain things uh, which we have to keep in mind. And since this is a basic understanding about the rural sociology uh, in terms of its emergence and uh, its growth, both at the world level 
and also at the Indian level, we have to see that how these things can be seen in a better way. I think uh, if this grounding have uh, some appeal to you, I think uh, the rest of the lectures will be more appealing to you in terms of the better understanding. So, I think uh, with those things, uh, let us have further interaction in the uh, further <laughs> assignments that will, uh, we will deliver and uh, we will try to have the specific uh, understanding about the uh, rural society in a specific fashion. Thank you.